Hi, everybody. This is Danielle Isaac. Welcome, welcome, Danielle Isaac. I'm a career change specialist. And one of the things that I love to share with people is that dream jobs are for real people. A lot of people think that you need to have uh, something, a special field that you're in, or you need to be famous or related to a famous person, or there's a lot of preconceived notions about what does it mean to have a dream job and who deserves a dream job. And a dream job is simply something that you love doing, something that you enjoy, something that lights you up. And so what I really want for people to get out of today's interview is that you absolutely can have a job that you love going to. If you're going to invest your time into something, it might as well be something you really enjoy that really lights you up. And oh, by the way, you can make money doing what you love. So today I'm excited to share with you somebody who is very special and near and dear to my heart. His name's Kevin Carton. And I reached out to people and said, tell me if you found your dream job. And if so, I'd love to interview you and find out how you found your dream job. Because I think it's valuable for other people to hear these stories to inspire people to take action and actually pursue their dream jobs as well. And also to get clarification, what is my dream job? So Kevin's with me here today and I'll introduce or I'll have him introduce himself in just a moment. But I, wanted, I want everybody to be thinking about how they can fit their own lives into his story and how they can clarify on what they would love to, what you would love to do. So Kevin, without further ado, would you please um, share with everybody a little bit about yourself, share your name, a little bit about yourself so we can get started here? Sure, absolutely. And first off, I want to say thank you so much, Danielle. This is a true pleasure for me because as I work in my dream job, I, I see people around that are going to work and they're not loving what they're doing. And I always want to help them in some way, shape, or form, but I'm never really sure how to. So I'm really happy that you're doing this work. It's, it's very much needed in the world. So uh, as Danielle said, my name is Kevin Carton. I live in Queens, New York, and I'm living my, I'm living my dream, basically. I'm working at a job I love. I'm a content developer for a life coaching company called Life Solutions That Work. And I'm also a yoga teacher. And that those two combined together, it's probably the most favorite, my most passionate things I'm, uh, I love in my life. And I, I wake up every day excited to go to work. I work at home and it's just, it's a blessing to really be doing this work. Um, but I know for you who's watching, you may be thinking, you know, is this possible for me? As Danielle will line out through here in these, the, this interview, it is possible because I didn't believe it was possible at first either, but working with a mentor actually got me thinking in a different way. And that is what really caused the results that I have now. But it's a whole different, pro it's a whole process. And, you know, I, I believe in you, as you watching. So, I mean, that's just coming from my heart. Um, and I'm really excited to be here to share with you my story, at least somewhat. And maybe you can get a little gold nugget or something that you can use out of it. So, very that's cool. Me. Very cool. Well said, Kevin. So let's start in the beginning. If you could just share what things were like before you discovered your dream job. What was life like? How did you know? <laughs> How did you know that you needed to be doing something else? Share a little bit about what that was like for you, if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll start back when I was in college. Uh, I was going to school to be a pharmacist. It was a six-year program. And I chose that mainly because I was in high school and my dad was saying, uh, you know, what do you want to do in college? What do you want to do for the rest of your life, basically? And as any uh, teenager, I was like, I really don't know. So he gave me a list of different majors I can go into and pharmacy just, it stuck out to me because I like science. I still love science. Um, and I wanted to help people in some way. And so I went down that path. But after four years of being in that program, my, entire, my last fourth year, my fourth year, I just started to wake up and started to realize that where I was going. Because after you know four years, I was very much invested in it, but I only had two more years to go. And so I started thinking more of the bigger picture of where I was going to go for the next 5, 10, 20 years of my life. And so I started looking at other people and what they had in their life and what they uh, were doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And I just started to check in with myself if I was going to be okay with what I was going to be doing five years from now, 10 years from now. That's the first step that I took just thinking, you know, what, could, what, what would my life be? And at that point, when I was in pharmacy school, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I realized that it just wasn't what I wanted to do. And that was the first step, though. And so that was where I was before I came to find my dream job. I didn't even know what my dream job was at that point. 
So maybe if you're listening and you don't know what your dream job is, but you know that what you're doing right now is not it, that's a great starting point because you've got to notice what you don't like in your life in order to change it. And that was where I was at. And so once I started realizing that going through pharmacy was just not for me, it's not what called to my heart. That's when I started taking steps and baby steps along the way. It wasn't a whole change overnight. It took years <laughs> and it may take years, it may take months, it may take a day, but either way, you just trust the process of knowing that what you love to do is out there. You may not know it yet, but it's out there. And so that's, that's where I was before I found my dream job. It was just finding that out that I, I knew I didn't want. Okay, cool. So I really like a few a uh, few points in there that I would just love to point out. One was that you paid attention to what you weren't happy about, uh, which is a great feedback to notice. Okay, this part doesn't align well with me. This isn't something that I would enjoy doing for the long term. Mm -hmm. And then, and that I think is really important is paying attention to that feedback that you're getting from yourself. It's just uh, most of us try to ignore it. We try to push on. We try to push through. I liked how you were paying attention to that. And then the second thing that I really appreciate about what you said is I, I looked ahead five, ten years down the road and said, can I see myself still doing this? Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important. It's like put on the job that you're thinking about doing, like almost put it on and wear it and think about it, be in the space of actually doing it and just notice, does it feel expansive? Does it feel good? Are you, does it feel um, freeing? Do you, do you feel great in that role or is there something contractive about it? it? There's something that's bothering you about it. You can't maybe even put your finger on it, but you can just tell there's something about it that just doesn't feel right or feel good. So paying attention to the, both of those pieces of feedback, I think really helps people figure out, okay, Okay, this is in the direction I want to go or this is not in the direction that I want to go and you were tuning into that which is really really cool thanks so congratulations also at discovering at a very uh, pretty young age most people will go 20 <laughs> 30 years down the road in a, in a job they don't enjoy mm -hmm. and before they figure that out what I what I really like is that you started paying attention early on because we all get those signals early on. The difference is you were actually paying attention to those signals. You found a mentor early on and you actually started to gain clarity and start to move in that direction, which is fantastic. So congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you. So then tell me, you know, everybody, you know, the big thing is that a, a dream job is different for every person. What's, what's a dream job for me is obviously very different for you. So tell us uh, just a little bit about what is your dream job? What about your job lights you up? Sure, absolutely. Um, so what I came to find, what was really making me uh, think in this way uh, back when I was in college and started thinking further out of what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and what I was going to do was I started to just read personal development books, self-help sometimes it's called or spiritual books or spiritual principles. I just started reading them because I got, um, one of my friends gave me a book called Thinking Grow Rich. It was the first book I ever read in this self-help or personal development field and it just expanded my mind so much that there's these all, all these other possibilities for life just in general. And I didn't know at first when I started on this path of learning more about these principles, about these laws of life, that I would be so passionate about not only learning about it, but also teaching it. Because as I kept learning, I felt naturally wanting to share this with other, with other people because I saw the results that it was having for more in my life. And so as I continued on that path, it just, it started to speak to me more and more and more. And I, the more I talked about it, the more I realized that people didn't actually f either know it or even if they knew it, they weren't taking action on what they knew could help them in their life. And so that kind of is what started me on the path. And what my dream job really is, is helping people discover uh, a bigger part about their life, no matter where it is, whether in their health uh, or in the relationships or the time, money, freedom or their vocation, just all around better life. I, I just want to see people become happier. Because God knows we need that in this world, like just more people that have come alive in their life. And so that's absolutely my dream job. And I do that in the ways that I work right now through writing for the life coaching company that I work for, uh, teaching yoga. And I, I love these things because I can see the tangible impact that I'm making on a day-to-day -day basis just through what I am sharing. And what I'm sharing is literally just what I love. 
And so that may be as your question that is speaks to different people. You ask what my, what, what my dream job is, but whoever's listening, you may have something completely different. You may hear uh, reading and just think, um, no, <laughs> I'll pass. I, I'm good with cooking or, or uh, exercising or being an athlete or uh, maybe some of you are writers as well. But it's whatever speaks to your soul and whatever when you're doing it, you get lost in it. Sometimes when I'm teaching yoga, it's an hour and 15 minute class and it goes by so quickly and we're all in Shavasana, which is the last resting pose. And I'm like, where did the hour go? <laughs> it's because I had so much fun doing it. And so it's just, it's so much, di so different for each, each person. But I know that everyone has that in their life, something that you love, because that's what we're here for, to find that out and then go do it. That's great. Uh, and what a great description. I do think for a lot of people, what's important to them, uh, and a lot of people are getting to this level of realization. Some people, like I said, it's later in life. Some of people, it's early on. But it's realizing that it's like, I think I'm meant to be doing something more. Like mm -hmm. I want to have a purpose in life. If I'm going to pour my time and my energy into something, I want to know that it has a positive impact in some way. And that was definitely a huge theme in what you said. Um, it's definitely a huge theme in my life too. If I'm going to uh, really pour myself the, the time that we have in our life, we tend to like to live in the illusion that life will go on forever. But the truth is that each of us has a limited amount of time and actually none of us knows how long that is, right? We all yep. have an expiration date out there that we're not aware of. It could be tomorrow, it could be 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road. We'd all like to think it's way down the road, but we don't really know. And so from that perspective of knowing life is really precious, it's like, okay, if I'm going to use this lifetime to do something I really enjoy, what is it that I really, really want to do? And oftentimes people say, I want to do something that matters. I want to do something that makes a positive impact. And that's what I, that's what I was hearing from you. So thank you for sharing that with that with You're me. Um, so another question for you is, so you had this knowing you, you had, you noticed um, things in your life where it was like, I, I don't think I'm going and this is something I want to continue to do. Uh, then you also said, okay, what do I want to do, right? That's step two. And yeah. you, got, you got clarification around what's that second thing that you want to do. Then the third thing is, okay, now I know what I want to do. Now I've got to, I've got to take that leap. I've got to start heading in that direction. I've got to start moving. And a lot of times uh, that is a leap of faith uh, mm -hmm. for most people. And, it, and it's actually multiple leaps of faith, right? Yes. It's like, okay, I know what I want to do. I know some people are not going to agree with it. I know some people are going to think I'm crazy. Some, you know, I know in a lot of cases I'm throwing 20, 30 years of experience down the road or an education out the window because it's irrelevant or whatever, whatever that those mental blocks are that make us think that we can't switch paths, right? We have, we have to identify what those mental blocks are and then we have to, we have to leap over and we have to go for it anyway. Mm -hmm. And so, so for you, kind of describe what that, what those, what one of the most pivotal moments in time was where you had to take that leap of faith. Sure, absolutely. And I know exactly where that is for me because it was one of the most scariest moments and one of the most happiest moments in my life when I made this leap of faith that I'll describe. Um, it was actually making the, the decision to discontinue going through pharmacy school to get my doctorate after six years. So as I said, I, I went through four years and that entire fourth year is when I started to realize what I didn't want and then started to somewhat realize what I did want to do. And again, I didn't have a clear picture of exactly, you know, writing for a life coaching company. It wasn't in my awareness at all. I just knew I wanted to do something different. And the most pivotal moment was when I had to share with my parents that I was done with pharmacy school. I was going to graduate with my bachelor's degree, the four year degree, but I wasn't going to continue for the next two years. And that was difficult because not only did I invest four years of my own personal life, my parents invested a lot of money. I invested a lot of my own money into this education. I invested um, basically everything. I mean, for the last four years before that and coming up to that point, it was a basic, it, in my head, I felt like I was punching my, my parents in the gut because like I was going against like what they set me up for and they worked so hard to help me get to. Um, but after rechecking with myself, over and over and over again, I just kept having this knowing, this, this feeling that, you know, this is not the way. Pharmacy was not the way. And that one point when I got to sit down with my parents, I, I shared with them what I, what I 
like was not going well for me in my life because I wasn't enjoying being in pharmacy school. And thank God for my parents, really, though. They're so supportive. I thought they were going to be, you know, livid and just, you know, like shun me. But it, although they were shocked, they still supported me. And I remember what my dad said, like it was yesterday. He said, do what you love. And I'm so grateful that I have that support in my life from my parents. Um, and that really helped me move forward into, in that sense. I still didn't have a clear vision of exactly where I was going to go. But again, I just had the knowing that there was something better. And I just continued to move towards that. And that was the one of the most pivotal moments. And then that kept me going on that path of making more decisions that were aligned with what I would love rather than what I did not want. Well, along with what I didn't want, as in, you know, I chose, all right, I'm not choosing that because I do not love it. I'm going to choose this because I do love it. And so there's little moments like that. And sometimes it, it's just like a 10 minute conversation. And that's the biggest pivotal moment you'll have. And that could come in many forms, but that was my form. And that's what I dealt with that I, that I went through. Um, but I, I will do it. I, if I could go back, I would do that over and over again. I would make the same decision because of where it got me to today. Great. Yeah, I, I think for a lot of people, what I see is they know they want to do something different. They even maybe have a good concept of what they want to do different. But when push comes to shove, when they actually have to stand up for themselves and what they want, that becomes a pivotal moment where they each either have to decide to go forward and do it afraid or they can fall back and slip back right into the way that they've always been doing things, the same mm -hmm. old job, the same old routine. And I know so many clients that I work with, especially even just deciding if they're going to work with me as a career coach. I'm like, I've, I can help you get there. I can help you get to the other side. I've been there. I have a process and I can show you. And they're like, Oh, they, they sit there and shiver and shake. And they're like, Oh God, I don't know. I don't know. It costs money. It costs time. I don't know. I don't know. And it's like, okay, right on the other side of that. Like if you say yes, right on the other side of that is, whoo, I'm so glad I said yes. But so many people, when they get in that shiver and shake moment, like when you were getting ready to talk to your parents, you know, it's like, this was like the pivotal moment where either you lean in and you do it and you do it afraid or you don't and you mm -hmm. go back to med school or you <laughs> yeah. go back to pharmaceutical school yep. Yep. and you just keep on that track and you just swallow it up inside and you just say, okay, I know I'm not happy, but I'm just going to keep doing this because you know, the, that part of you, it doesn't tell you either. That part of you doesn't say, oh, you're so afraid. And you know, it, it's like, it's rational logic about why you shouldn't do it. Like, oh, well, yeah. you've already yeah. invested all this money and your parents have invested so many money and they're not going to, you know, they're going to be really upset with you. And right. That's how our, the voices yeah. talk to us, Absolutely. right? That was and internal so I, voices for me, but also external too. Cause I was hearing that from my friends and family as well. So <laughs> exactly. Comes in many forms. Yeah. exactly. I mean, that's perfect because a lot of times, you know, the outside world reflects what's going on in the inside. They're just a mirror for everything that's going on in your head. And that was exactly what was happening to you, you know, and, yep. and you know, and I've experienced those like moments too, where it was like, either I'm doing this or I'm not either. I'm, I, I got to get off the fence though. I can't sit on the fence and think about it. It's either yeah. I'm going to jump over the fence and even though I can't see what's on the other side or I'm just going to get off the fence and say, no, I'm going to continue with life and status quo, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so yeah. Anyway, that was really cool uh, that you had the courage to go talk to your parents because that's really what courage is. is like, it's doing it afraid. It's doing it anyway. You had the courage to have that conversation with them. And thank God you did because yes. now your life is on a much better track. Great segue. Tell us now what life is like. Why are you glad that you made that decision? What things are going on in your life that reaffirm that you made the right decision? Absolutely. And you know, I was going to tell this part at the end of the last question that my answer, but this is actually a perfect point to say this, that literally just a month ago, my friends that I was in school with, that I was there in school for four years, there's about nine guys that I, I roomed with a bunch of them. We were really close friends. And they all just graduated as pharmacists. And it was such an amazing feeling to see them graduate and see them go on with their life path. Because a lot of them, they actually love it. Like they have family businesses in pharmacy. And so it's what they want to do. And so seeing them graduate and then makes me, it made me look back into the last two years of my life and see, okay, let me see how this decision has changed my life and changed it for the better. Because if I stayed, I knew where I was going to go. I would be exactly where they are. 
graduating pharmacy school, you know, taking a, a test to get certified in my state, and then go and work in a pharmacy job. But that's not what I wanted because I knew exactly what that was going to be like in my mind. I knew I, I saw it. I talked with other people that were pharmacists, so I just knew it wasn't for me. And now, two years later, after this whole decision, I'm looking back and I just think about my life, and it's just like a dream, really. But it is my dream because it's now come true. It's my reality. And so life right now for me, I work from home. I wake up in my bed literally right here, <laughs> get some coffee, come sit down at my desk, uh, work as a writer. I love to write. And it's also with a company that I absolutely adore because their programs have changed my own life. And I get to help my friends and family learn about what dr dreams they have, how to to define that, how to move that into the reality as well, even in small things, in their like relationships and expanding the love that they have with uh, you know, a loved one or a sibling or a friend. Um, and just it's such a blessing to know that if someone can come if someone comes to me looking for answers, that I can at least suggest different things that they can do to find those answers. And so that's a huge blessing for me. And then on top of that, teaching yoga is one of my favorite things to do outside of the work that I do as a writer. I teach yoga three times a week, and I usually have about five to ten students per class. And I could just feel people just relaxing and becoming more of themselves when they step into the studio that I teach at. And when I hold space for them where they can just relax, let go, and focus on their body, their mind, their spirit, and just making themselves healthier and more aware human beings, it just, it touches my soul. And I just, I walk out every time after teaching with, with a big smile on. I, I just, it's, it's like a pinch me, it's so good life. And like, I can't, I can't put into words enough because the experience is way more, more than the words can ever convey. But for you, for you who's watching, the decision that I made to go for this life, it's nothing spectacular. It's out of the ordinary, yes. But every single one of us is capable of that decision because I know for a fact there's things that each of one of us love. And I know that you have something that you love too. And I know that you can make that, in your, make that into your reality because the spiritual principles, the laws of life, they all work the same, just like gravity. So as much as it worked for me, it could work for you too. Maybe a different story. And it will be a different story because it's your story. But I know for a fact that that is something. It's a truth, actually that you can actually live that life too. And so that's my life now. And I mean, thank you so much for allowing me to share this. <laughs> it's, it's such a blessing. I love talking about it. Absolutely. And, and you bring up a great point and it is to remind people that dream jobs are real jobs. And, and mm -hmm. what's a dream job for you and what's a dream job for me is different than everybody else who's watching this. The point is it's a job that lights you up. It's something you enjoy doing. You can't wait to get up and go do it. Mm -hmm. And it's usually on the green growing edges of what you're comfortable with, <laughs> meaning you have to... You have to get outside your comfort zone because it's probably not, it probably doesn't look exactly like what you're doing now, which means there's going to be a lot of new things that you have to do, a lot of new skills you have to do, um, and a lot of just, uh, it, you might have to do marketing or sales that you've never had to do. You might have to learn to sell yourself if you have your own business, which you've never had to do. There's all kinds of, if you've never taught a class before, it, you've got to learn some skills with that too. And it, when you first do that, that, that will feel really scary. But over time, it, it starts to become easier and you start to get better and better at it, right? So there's this awkward growing period, but it's also this really um, fun period where you're stretching and growing yourself personally. And with that comes the sense of aliveness that's going on for you, where you really are leaning into the life that you would love living. You're leaning into something that really brings you joy. So super proud of you, Kevin, for doing yeah. that. Uh, sounds amazing. And if somebody wanted to come to your yoga class, where could they find you? Oh, you could def definitely just check out my website. It's my full name, kevinfranciscarton.com, or because my initials are KFC, it's K kfcyoga.com. Either one of the links will bring you to the same website, and you can check out my schedule there. Awesome. I have no doubt that your yoga class is amazing. You have uh, just hanging around you. You've just got such a positive energy. Everybody that I talk to and knows you is just like, this guy is awesome to hang around. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, you know, I would, like I said, if I lived in your town, you're on the East coast, I'm on the West coast. If I lived on your town, I would, I would definitely be hanging out in your yoga classes. <laughs> oh, thank you. 
If you ever come to New York, come to my class. <laughs> all right, all right. So thank you so much for your time today. I hope this benefited our audience. I know it will. I know mm -hmm. some people will walk away and go, okay, their, their minds are going to be churning and thinking about this more for themselves and how it applies to their own lives. And thank you uh, for just sticking with me. Kevin and I have been dealing through the technical issues of this, and Kevin's been amazing through that process. So thank you so much, Kevin. Well, and if, if any of you are interested in learning more about uh, working with um, me as a career coach, helping you clarify what you want to do, and also um, the steps that it takes to transition into a job you would really, really love, you can reach me at www.danielleisaac.com, and you can uh, see what I do, what services I have on there, and you're welcome to peruse, so to speak, as well as I offer a free uh, consultation with me, so feel free to take advantage of that if this is something you've really been thinking about and, uh, and a lot of people think about it but not many people do something about it they sit on the fence so if you're ready to get off the fence and start moving in the direction of something you want to do then the first step is to take action so uh, go ahead and sign up for a free consultation I'll be super excited to start talking with you and getting to know you better thanks Kevin have a great day and uh, uh, we'll talk to you very soon okay yes definitely thank you Danielle you. all right bye-bye